a show with the perfectionist, but basically you have to get the perfectionist to up-level uh, its uh, requests to uh, excellence instead of perfection. But let's stick with the with with the uh, critic now, and the critic has uh, is is in a team with the um, perfectionist, and it's making uh, it makes things a little bit hard for you. So it, uh, it gets on your case. That's true. <laughs> okay, so Jen, I want you to now if if you feel safe doing so and if your intellect and um, the, uh, the other protective parts if you don't have any objection I would like you to move from the seat you're seated in now and move to a different locale and uh, as much as you can become your inner critic let your body assume uh, the position a critic would assume and, and be that inner critic okay I'm ready hello critic hello the critic Tell me, uh, what's your job? What do you do for Janet? My job is to keep Janet from getting punished by the world. Ah, I see. And when did you uh, become a, uh, a a powerful force in, in her life? How old was she? What was going on? I came in very early when my um, when her mother, when, when Janet's mother was suffering from postpartum uh, depression. She gave birth to this third child, which she didn't really want. She she wanted on one level because uh, it was the baby boom era and everybody was having children, and she didn't want uh, me on the other level because she really didn't uh, like parenting very much. She wanted to do something else, but it was the, the times. She was a she was born in 1920. Uh, two, so she was in her uh, 30s when I came along, and um, it was just she wanted to do something else. She was very intelligent. And she was bored with being a mother, but that was the role of parents in the 50s to be, uh, especially women. They were supposed to be mothers. And and, and so, how did uh, this mother uh, bring out your inner critic? How did uh, the how inner critic did you protect? Janet from this um, mother who uh, at some level didn't want her, probably even wanted to kill her even at some level. On some level, yes. Well, I, I was very um, aware that if I said the wrong thing or did the wrong thing, that mother would be violent towards me. And it was, um, she was either physically violent or verbally violent, or she would withdraw her affection. So it was a very dangerous world to walk in. Um, Janet was the youngest of three children, so there were no other siblings to play or play with. So she had to um, curtail any outward actions that would offend mother in order to get her needs met for food and things like that, and to get any kind of attention because she was very alone, home alone, with a mother who wasn't really present. Uh, thank you, critic. You know, I hear in that what you just explained is that you must have been allied with an intellect that could analyze the situation, uh, and, and so that it did, not only was your uh, critic aligned, I hear, critic, not only were you aligned with Janet's perfectionist, but you were also aligned with her analyst or her intellect. Yes, that's, that's quite true, because I think if... Um, the intellect hadn't stepped in and made it uh, and helped her figure out how to get through this, she may not have survived. So as she has gone through her life, uh, critic, how have you helped her? What would you like her to appreciate in terms of what you've done uh, for her as she's grown up from the little child up to now? Well, uh, Janet had to do a lot of therapy with Dr. Lesson to tame me because I was a what's called a killer critic um, but now she's uh, yeah let's uh, let me just say that a killer critic is the is the worst kind of hardest to deal with because a killer critic says you shouldn't be alive so if Janet's mother is saying uh, you know I wish uh, that uh, you weren't here then then uh, that, that person is likely to develop a, a, a critic that wants her to die or become sick or uh, kill herself or uh, in some that's, way. That's uh, what my childhood was about. It was about illness. I was uh, the killer critic. Well, Janet's childhood was about illness. She was always sick. 
very sickly child on the verge of death many times. Yeah, and so so that that's very very deep, and it will often take a, a lot of lot a lot of work uh, to balance that out. And we will talk about that in future situations. But for ordinary critics, that don't say that you um, should die, but that you you'd better. Uh, get in line and uh, watch out for criticism and not offend other people. And Janet's uh, critic also seemed to have allied, I, I know, with her uh, pleaser. Uh, what do I got to do to please uh, the dangerous people? Yes, most definitely. Um, Janet's pleaser came front and center because she had to figure out who to be in relationship to those around her in order to feel safe and be protected and to and to survive, yes. Okay, so Critic, we're going to ask you to do a fantasy now. If you were to totally control Janet, and she wasn't any way else in the whole world except, you know, a critic who was monitoring uh, uh, behavior all the time to make sure she uh, didn't lose uh, what she wanted and uh, she wouldn't get punished. What would her life be like if you were all she was? Well, for many years, I was 90% of her life. Wow. <laughs> so I can, she can relate to that. Um, basically, uh, somewhat, can, uh, it can manifest in her as being maybe somewhat paranoid about and cautious. And so if I had dominated her life, she probably wouldn't have done anything. So I, I didn't dominate wow. her life. She probably would have just stayed still or, or retracted, maybe became a hermit in the woods, you know, <laughs> just escaping uh, everything, all the stimulation as a young person. Now uh, I'm a tame critic, and so I'm her ally, and I help her uh, figure things out and uh, make it safe for her and her, her loved ones, like like you, Dr. Lesson, and yeah, those in her life. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a very important part, and... Um, but at one point, I was out of control. What is uh, when she uh, uh, beckons you or calls you in? Uh, does, what, did, uh, what does she call you, or how do you know that uh, it's time to let Janet consult you? Well, I'm pretty much um, right there, ready to come in, step in whenever there's something that she has to pay attention to. She doesn't even have to have conscious thought. I'm so dominant in her life that I am just. Um, ready at any given moment to step in and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, uh, you might want to look at that before you make that decision, look before you leap type of thing. Do you call her a, a sweetheart or, or a, hey stupid or what do you call her? Um, I don't have to call her stupid anymore. She called herself stupid <laughs> many, many years. Right now I'm her ally and I assist her in making the best decisions possible. Uh, she's getting better and better at listening to me, and so, um, you know, every once in a while she does screw up, and, and she, you know, I don't have to do anything. She just beats herself silly. Okay, so, you know, for those of you at, at home who are just starting to train your inner critic, uh, tell your critic to call you sweetheart or pal or buddy or something like that, and, to, uh, and that uh, you will listen to the critic. You definitely will listen to your critic, uh, it, it, and you just request that she or he use a a, a, a loving uh, appellation that calls you with your name sweetly even, but that it doesn't insult you to begin with. Because what we're going to do with Janet, and what we're going to ask all of you to do, is to train your critic. And, uh, and what we're going to, what we want your critic to do is, first of all, take one area in which you criticize yourself. Uh, and uh, Janet, what's the main area nowadays that you're uh, criticizing Janet about, critic? I'd say business. Okay, business. Okay. How to make money. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh. Okay, so that's a that's a really uh, good one. Okay. So, critic, uh, when you. Uh, criticize Janet about how she makes money, uh, what is it that you say to her? You can do much better than that. Okay, so what we want you to do, critic, is to do two things. To say what Janet is doing right in terms of money and what small steps she can take to improve. In other words, we don't want to just have you saying negative stuff and so that you, you, you get uh, Janet to 
you'll be you're basically a critic. We're asking you to critique yourself so that you do a better job criticizing Janet. And if you're doing a better job, you're going to tell her what she's doing right in terms of money in this case, and what small doable steps she can perform uh, to move to do better with money. And the small doable step means not something huge but something she can actually do this week okay so critic um, now that you know that what is Janet doing right as regards money well one of the things she did right was um, she took some time off even though I'm the pusher and wanting her to make money I realized that uh, she needed a, a little break so she took some time off for the holiday season and now um, she said in her own mind that at the beginning of the year, this and that, you know, ABCs, which we won't bore the listening audience with, but the ABCs of what need to be done. So she's been making a list and checking it twice <laughs> and relaxing, getting through the holidays. And now the list is front and center and she is on her list and um, we keep refining the list. I work with her to refine the list. And um, instead of criticizing her, what she's doing right is she's getting through some of the items. She doesn't have to get through every, all the items on the list each day. And I'm helping her prioritize her list, what's the most important thing to do. And things are improving. So that's wonderful. Thank you, critic. So you see that and each person's critic will tell them, you know, whatever it is that they, they are being criticized about how to embrace both sides, the, uh, the industrious and the uh, kickback in this case for Janet and are uh, things that she's balancing and she's using the critic to do that. So what I want you to do is to just be able to get your critic to take something that uh, it criticizes you about and get that critic to say what you're doing right and what step the next step is. and. Uh, all this comes down to really taming your critics so it becomes one of your voices and doesn't crowd out or drown out other parts of you. Okay, so Janet, I would like you uh, now to move back into your uh, center and okay. uh, separate from the inner critic. Okay. Notice how your posture and breathing uh, mm -hmm. shifts. Uh, what was that like for you uh, now, that, now that you're back in your center? Oh, it's always a difficult journey looking at my critic, <laughs> but um, I'm I'm grateful with all this counseling that I've I've married my shrink and I've had years, fifteen years of counseling now to tame my critic, and I'm very grateful that now my critic is um, is my ally and supporting me and helping me to improve my life so that other parts of me can come out and play. Oh, wonderful! And, and that's wonderful. And see, when the less that Janet criticizes herself, the less she'll put me in the parental role of being a critical person. So it's, it helps my relationship with her immensely. So, now, Janet, now the next thing I want you to do is I want you to stand up behind uh, the chair where you were sitting. Okay. Okay. Now you're. This is what we call the witness position. As witness, I just want you to see the relationship with Janet and her uh, and her critic. And uh, don't pass any judgment on Just notice what is. You're totally neutral when you're in witness. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. excellent. Okay, so now uh, you sort of see how that system works. And now what I want you to do is to sit where I've been sitting. We'll change seats there. Okay. Okay, good. Now, you are now sit I was modeling your inner therapist for you. And now I want you to be Janet's inner therapist therapist and as that sub self that we're deliberately constellating here inner therapist of Janet's uh, what are your traits and characteristics what kind of a sub self are you oh I'm very much like Dr. Lesson <laughs> <laughs> um, yes I, I'm very compassionate and kind and understanding and I allow allow I allow her to do what she needs to do in order to evolve and grow and become who she's becoming Oh, thank you, uh, Janet's inner therapist. And and uh, from your perspe perspective, uh, you know, what did Janet learn about her her critic and about the uh, 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 what its interests are in terms of handling uh, money now? Well, every time she revisits critic, she learns something else, and she she learned that her critic is coming along quite nicely, and now is a, a compassionate companion, helping her walk through life and guide her more like a guide and 
and she and and she knows that the critic will step in when appropriate and give her the warning signs. Thinks she needs to pay attention. To